I think that we should all give an applaud right now to Hamas for a job well done. When they woke up in the morning and they found and they found the field hands in the house with a knife ready to cut their fucking throats. I was late to the news, but when I heard it, I smiled. I don't want to hear that bullshit, 250, 250 innocent Israelis are dead. Fuck them! Again, I swear, I salute Hamas. A job well done. I want to paint it here in America and then us that what happened yesterday was terrorism. What happened yesterday was freedom fighters fighting for freedom. And I want to make one point. Every person that died yesterday was not innocent. It's our job. It's our job here in the West to wake people up. It's our job to show people who the real terrorists. In London, welcome to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Five days ago, terrorists from Hamas attacked Israel. They murdered and raped civilians. They executed the elderly at bus stops. They took babies and Holocaust survivors as hostages. And they massacred young people at a festival. They may, it emerged last night, have even beheaded babies in one village. More than 1,200 Israelis are now believed to have died. And this brutal attack has dragged Israel into war. Israel had every right to respond with force, as it's done. The death toll in Gaza is now more than 1,000, and many more will die. Many of those will be completely innocent people, like those who died in the Hamas attacks. Like almost everyone, I've been shocked and sickened by the stories and videos emerging from the attack. I've also been stunned by the moral cowardice of those who celebrated terror as resistance and brutality as politics. I've called out the people who've conflated a terror attack with a geopolitical debate, and I've spoken to fair-minded people on both sides of that debate. I've done all this as a journalist and a human being, but with no personal skin in the game. My guest tonight, on the other hand, is one of the most prominent and influential Jewish commentators on the planet, Ben Shapiro. The Daily Wire's Ben Shapiro joins me now. Ben, uh, great to have you on the programme. I wish it was under different circumstances. I want to ask you, first of all, where were you when you first heard about these attacks? So I'd been in Israel for several weeks, and we had just gotten home to, uh, to the United States on Friday morning. Uh, Friday night, obviously, is Sabbath for, for Orthodox Jews, uh, and it, it also happened to be one of the biggest celebratory days of the year. The Shemini Atzeret Simchat Torah was a, a two-day, what we call Yom Tov, which means no electricity, really, you can't use your phone, you can't use your computer. Uh, my security team showed up at synagogue on Saturday morning uh, and started informing me of what had happened, and then news was was kind of bleeding through throughout the day. Uh, there were various sources, you know, maids who were leaving TVs on, for example, or uh, my security team informing me throughout the weekend of what exactly was happening because of the serious security concerns that arise for Jews all over the planet when there's mass terror attack uh, in Israel or or anywhere else. And um, and so, you know, we were finding out in uh, a lagged time what exactly was happening. Obviously, we couldn't watch the videos. We couldn't see exactly what was happening until it came back online on Sunday night and were hit with the news that at that point, 700 Jews have been murdered today. That number is uh, has been totaled at well over 1,200 Jews have been murdered uh, in, in Israel. We started to see all of the pictures on our TVs. Uh, I obviously, because I'm in touch with, with a lot of people on the ground, first responders, uh, people on the ground in Israel, I started receiving extraordinary levels of, of footage and, and video and audio and, and pictures of what exactly had happened in these places. And um, yeah, I mean, these are these are images. I've, I've been trying to show them to the audience for, for one very specific reason. Uh, and that specific reason is to, to, to understand what evil is, you have to look in the face of evil. And I, I think that you know, we in the West have a, a peculiar narcissism that we, everyone thinks like we do, uh, that, that we value children in a certain way. And so everyone values children in a certain way. Uh, that that if somebody does something truly terrible or evil, it must be that there was something that quote unquote drove them to it must be a policy question. Um, but as it turns out, that that is not the case because there's literally nothing I think there's that could drive people in in the West, a normal person, uh, to go and to murder a baby in their crib uh, in in a civilian area to to simply walk in and gun down grandmothers or to rape a woman and drag her back to the Gaza Strip. What what could drive you to do that? I can't think of anything that would drive me to do that. But there are a lot of people. Are not only driven to do that, but but believe full well in the virtue of, of what they're doing. That is a different mode of thought, and that is not something you can negotiate. And the the folks that we that we see kind of kind of 
advocating this, defending this kind of behavior are the folks on the left-hand side of the aisle. The Black Lives Matter, man, those guys, they're, they're defending this behavior. That, uh, you know, Palestine, people of Palestine, man, they can do whatever the hell they want to do because, again, they're, they're oppressed, man. They've been colonized. And um, they can go and they can do whatever they want to do. And we have truly get to understand that's what's happening here in America. That's what they're promoting, man. That, uh, you know, black people should be allowed to do whatever they want to do. Because, again, the reason why they're, they're doing things, the reason why they're breaking laws, committing crimes, is because they're black. Because, man, they've been oppressed. People have done bad things to their ancestors, so uh, they're oppressed. And they ought to get a, a pass when it comes to breaking the law, when it comes to hurting people, when it comes to um, to committing terror, breaking terror, you know, looting stores, assaulting folks, shooting folks, doing whatever the hell they want to do, raping folks. They ought to get passed because, uh, again, their ancestors were oppressed. You know, they're, they're not oppressed now. As a matter of fact, they're living off the... Um, a lot of not old men, but a lot of them off the government dime. You know, they got they got free housing. They got a thousand dollar cell phone, a two thousand dollar laptop. But again, they're oppressed. They're oppressed people. So again, we have to look the other way when they when they lose stores. And as a matter of fact, if those stores dare dare to close, then guess what? Those stores are being racist. They're being racist stores. They're being run by racist people. They ought to sit there and, you know, and, and be okay with losing all kinds of money. They ought to be okay with that because if they're not, they don't like black people. That's what the issue is. We have truly got to understand, guys, things right now, they're so backwards. And the folks that are defending this, man, again, they will bring destruction and really, it's already happening. Destruction to the, to the West, to, to America. They are bringing destruction. We, there's no way we can handle this kind of, of, of mentality, of model mindset. It will destroy this country. And what we're doing is we're using the dumbest of the dumb. That's what they're using. The dumbest of the dumb to destroy this country. They are going after people that um, purely based on emotional reasons and uh, people that, um, that that are emotional, man. They're evil people. They truly are. And uh, they're playing on their emotions. They're pulling those strings to get them to tear this country apart. And the first ones that will go down is them. Guys, I wanted to bring you a few minutes from the Jesse Lee Peterson show. And they're talking about this and they're talking about Black Lives Matter and, and um, you know, these folks being for, you know, evil. And that's truly what this is. But guys, watch this. Black Lives Matter is a evil, worse than KKK, radical, socialist, communist organization that was founded by a bunch of fat, black, black, radical lesbians. That's who they said they are. I didn't say it. They said it. I'm going to repeat what they said. And yet you let them destroy the country. And now they're saying that all the money you gave them, they're using for their own personal use, according to reports. And abolish the police. Would you go that far? You know, I would go that far. We, the system of policing that hails from slave catching is absolutely unjust. And abolish the police and replace them with, with what, if anything? The second side of abolition is building what it is we want. Okay, Black Lives Matter grassroots stands in solidarity with our Palestinian family who are currently resisting 57 years of settler colonialism and apartheid. As black family, as black people continue to fight to end militarism and mass incarceration in our own communities, let us understand uh, the resistance in Palestine as an attempt 
to tear down the gates of the world's largest open-air prison as radical black organization grounded in abolitionist ideals. We see clear parallels between black and Palestinian people. Black Lives Matter is evil. They are every bit as evil as Hamas, man, they are. They're every bit as evil as them. Again, they support them. They support this kind of stuff. They support what they're doing. They said there's no victims. There's no victims, real victims in uh, Israel. There aren't. So, so we truly get to understand. If, you, if you're looking at it that way, if you have that mindset, then that's purely evil. It is. But again, people have got to start standing up. They've got to start realizing what's happening. They've got to start standing up. And not worrying about being called racist or whatever, man. We have got to start standing up for this country before we lose it. Why we still have a country? We've got to start standing up. You know, we've also got to understand, man, that um, these people that are, causing for, that are calling for the destruction of the West... They truly are stupid people. I mean, they're they're dumb. They're dumb people. They truly believe that uh, things are going to be better when they get rid of the white people, when they get rid of the um, the uh, the Jewish folks. You know, they truly believe man, that the reason why they're not doing well is because of the white man, of the Jewish people, of whatever. Man, they're holding them down. They're holding them down. So... We truly have got to understand these people are dumb. No, I'm not, I'm not talking about all black people, not at all, not close. But I am saying that the people that support the stuff, support Black Lives Matter, support uh, Palestine, they're dumb. They truly are dumb. They're brainwashed people who truly believe that by doing so, they're gonna they're, they're gonna have more opportunity. Their lives are going to be better. And the fact of the matter is, no, they're not. They're going to be worse. They're they're being taken advantage of. They're being used. And they don't even see it. They don't seem to understand it. They don't know it. Because they're stupid as hell. And people have got to start standing up and stop worrying about what names these stupid people call you. Don't worry about it. Nobody should care about that kind of stuff. But hey, guys, if you would, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks. You son of a... You son of a... You son of a...